Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of calculus. So let me start with a little story. Suppose that, you know, I'm driving my car, beautiful race car, and blah blah blah, and suddenly... Oh, there's a cop that just gets here and arrests me. And he says, whoa, 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 you are going way too fast. You were going at 70 kilometers per hour in a 50 kilometers per hour zone. This is not good. So me, you know, being a clever first year calculus student, I reply, hmm, how do you know I was driving at 70 kilometers per hour? I've only been driving for about five minutes. Cop is not amused. So he just says, well, you know what I mean. If you kept driving like that for uh, an hour, you would have gone through 70 kilometers. And then I say, no, 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 you don't understand. I was actually decelerating, so I certainly would not have gone through 70 kilometers in the next hour. The cop starts getting a little angry. He says, well, you know what I mean. If you had kept going at a constant velocity for another hour, you would have gone through 70 kilometers. I just reply, ah, that can't be true. Just look ahead. There's a cliff. If I keep going, I'm just going to fall off the cliff. All right, I'm going to stop the story here, but I guess you get the point. Defining velocity is not as obvious as we think. All right, so let's now try to define velocities mathematically. So suppose that I have an object and that I know its position as a function of time. So this would be given by the graph of a function here, x of t, which is the position of the object as a function of time t. How can I define its velocity? Well, the first thing you can do is define the average velocity. So you would pick two uh, times, say t1, which could be one second after it started, and t2. At each of these times, the object it has, is at a certain position, x of t1 and x of t2. And then you can define the average velocity as usual as being the distance traveled delta x over the time interval. More precisely, that would be x of t2 minus x of t1 divided by t2 minus t1. Okay, this is all good, but this is not the velocity that the cop was talking about. He said you are going at 70 kilometers per hour right now. So he wanted to associate a velocity to a particular moment of time, not to a large finite interval of time. So how can we do that? Well, if you look back at the picture here, we can be clever. What we can do is we can take the second moment of time t2 and send it to be very, very close to t1. So in other words, we're going to calculate the average velocity, but over a very, 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 very short time interval centered at t1. Extremely short. This is how we're going to define the instantaneous velocity. So I'm going to write this as v of t1. So I'm not going to write instantaneous because whenever we talk about velocity from now on, we will mean instantaneous velocity. And the way I write this process here of bringing t2 extremely close to t1 mathematically is as a limit. So I write limit as t2 goes to t1 of the expression above for the average velocity. So what I really do is exactly what I said. I take the average velocity but over a very, very, very extremely short time interval centered at t1. All right, so this is how we define velocity. It turns out that this is a very, very important process. So starting from x of t, a position function, and extracting from it a velocity function v of t is something that has a name in calculus. It's called taking the derivative of the function x of t. Or equivalently, sometimes we call this differentiating. That means the exact same thing. And in fact, it also has a special notation. So if I want to calculate the velocity at a certain time, say t equals to c, I'm going to write that as x prime of c. That means the derivative of the function x of t evaluated at t equals to c. Or equivalently, I can write, that, write this as dx dt, which means derivative of the function x with respect to the variable t evaluated at t equals to c. And this whole process here of taking derivative, studying their properties, and so on, has a name. This is called differential calculus. And in fact, this is a big part of what we'll study this semester. All right, so let me just summarize. So I've talked about position function and velocity functions, but in fact, you can do the same process for an arbitrary function. So suppose that you're given a function f as a function of a variable x, then you can define its average rate of change over a certain interval as being the difference in the function 
evaluated at the two endpoints, divided by x2 minus x1. And you can also define its instantaneous rate of change at a certain point x equals to c in exactly the same way as before, as taking the limit. So you take the average rate of change, but take the limit where your uh, interval becomes very, very, very small around the point x equals to c. It has a name. It's called the derivative of f. It's also denoted by f prime of c or df dx evaluated at x equals to c. So the function here could be position function, in which case the derivative would be velocity, but the function could also be anything else. It could, for example, be the velocity of function itself, in which case its derivative or its instantaneous rate of change would be the acceleration. All right, so this is what differential calculus is about.